Thank you very much, sir, for the very interesting talk. You want some more? Yeah. <laughs> Come to SBM tomorrow, Sunday, 2 p.m. You hear more. Okay? I hope you know where SBM is. It's um, at number 9 Ruby Lane, um, off Opel Crescent, off Serangoon Road, um, opposite the um, uh, uh, fire station. There's a coffee shop there, uh, very well known for his fish head steamboat, I think. So if you can find that steamboat, you probably find it. <laughs> it's not connected to the steamboat. <laughs> okay. Um, I I used to say, uh, thank God and uh, oh my God. You know, uh, actually no reference to any God, you see. But I was in a situation where I just said, oh thank God, oh my God. You know, maybe I should say. Then Buddha, <laughs> or otherwise. Anyway, um, now that you've heard the uh, Buddhist concept of God, I'm sure you have lots of questions to ask. Um, there are mics on the floor here. Okay, please use them. If you're too shy, I think the ushers here, they have little pieces of paper for you to pen your questions or your thoughts. You're most welcome. Uh, while waiting, I'd just uh, like to say this. After this question and answer session, we will be inviting all the uh, members of the Mahasangha, that is the monks here, up on stage to give uh, the blessings. Um, after the blessings, please be seated. Don't go away because I have some very interesting announcements okay, to make. I directly mention what the Buddha has said. You know, Mahayana schools developed later, they have incorporated a new concept. They are very meaningful, they are very useful. Let us take Bodhisattva, or Avalokitesa, or Goddess of Mercy. They regard them as God. Therefore, they also cannot say, they don't believe in God. They worship and pray to Avalokitesa, or Goddess of Mercy, as a God. And Bodhisattvas also they worship as God. So this concept is there. They cannot get rid of this belief. Okay, Varabha sir, there's a question from a member of the audience. If there were no God, to whom do you pray and give thanks from a God-fearing Christian? This Christian, we have to answer this from Buddhist point of view or? <laughs> yeah. From Buddhist point of view, in my life, I have never prayed to anybody. Do you believe that? I use my effort, my knowledge, my understanding to do my work without expecting anything from heaven. There's a nice saying in Sanskrit language. Udyoginam purusha singha mupayanti lakshmi daivena daiva mitika purusha vidan Daivam nihatya kuru paurusha matma sakya yatne krute yadina siddhati kotra dosa. I like this very much, this say. Meaning is, those who believe in God, when they are in trouble, without using their effort and knowledge and understanding, they go on praying and praying and praying and worshipping and worshipping. I can give an example, this is not a very present one, please forgive me. A young couple, after their marriage, they were expecting a baby for one or two years, no news. But every day they go to church, they are Christian. Every day go and ask the 
please pray, oh God, we want a child. Now these priests also got fed up with them. <laughs> <laughs> then what he said, it seems you depend on God to have a baby. Why not you two also try it? <laughs> Instead of depending on God for everything, there are many things that we can do, we can find out, we can gain what we want. No need to depend on God for everything. Example. Now you believe in God. God will protect you and everything. You go away without closing your door. <laughs> what Dharanti is there, God will protect your house until you come back. <laughs> that means you have neglected your duty. Whether God exists or not, you should not forget your duty. Uh, the Buddhism is like the Buddhism say whether God exists or not, whether exists, no harm at all. But don't forget your duty because of God. <laughs> okay, there's another question for you. There was a, believing in God makes us humble. What makes a Buddhist humble? <laughs> humble. <laughs> Well, when you believe something, we surrender. When you surrender, we become humble. Okay, there's another question for you, Barrister. Uh, how does a Buddhist sustain his faith if he does not believe in God? They can remain as a better Buddhist without depending on God by using his or her full effort and understanding, by observing precept and principles and good qualities without depending on anybody. So he can depend, he can remain as a better Buddhist. Thank you. Uh, the next question. Uh, members of the public, please use the microphone. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, any questions to ask, please. Venerable Doctor, uh, can I ask you a question? From the Christian point of view, they always believe that is the end of the world. But do does Buddhist think likewise? My dear friends, why do you want to depend on religion, depend on God, to understand that there will be an end of everything in this world? <laughs> If there is anything to come into existence, yang kinchi samude dhammam sabvantan nirod dhammam. First servant of the Buddha, he said, if there is anything that come into existence due to combinations of elements and energies, that will never remain forever without changing, without decaying, without disintegrating. The sun and the moon and the galaxies and the earth and anything that it exists are subjected to this. They appear, exist, change, decay, disintegrate. Again reappear due to dispersed particles. There are certain particles and energies never disappear. And again formation takes place. Uh, that is why the Buddha says, there is neither beginning nor an end. Burton Russell, I mentioned his name. He has written a book. He says, 
Among the founders of all those religions, I respect only one man. He is the Buddha. Why should I respect? The founders of all the other religions, that is his language, not my language, <laughs> made false statement about the beginning of this world. This world was created by so and so, such and such time. It shows how poor their understanding about the world. Buddha is the only man who never made such false statement. He knew what this world is. That is why he said there is neither beginning nor an end. Always they appear, disappear, appear, disappear. And this is the nature of the universe. Yeah, sir. So I have the two questions to ask. The first question is about this um, attaining the Buddha hood, where the priorities is about purifying the mind, purifying the actions to attain Nibbana. So at one time when persons get to attain the statehood of purification, like any of the monks that is, uh, exist around the world, so are they considered attaining Buddhahood? And we can also classify them as Buddha. And my next question is... No, no. One is enough. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is very simple. Not at all. Becoming a Buddha is the most difficult task in this world. Now within this world cycle, from the very beginning up to this, only four Buddhas appear. Before the end of this world system, before this disintegrate, another Buddha will appear. He will be the last one within this world cycle. When the next world cycle starts again, Buddhas appear from time to time. There are three religions mentioned. Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism. Before the end of this world, Buddhism says another Buddha will appear. Christianity says second coming of Jesus before the end of this world. Hinduism says among the ten incarnations of God, last incarnation appears before the end of this world. Only religion that never talk anything about another prophet or messenger or the Buddha is Islam. Only God, nothing but God, no any other God. Belief alone cannot be 
you had to purify your mind by knowing the nature of your mind, introspect, mindfulness and watchfulness of the nature of mind. What are the things that disturbing your mind? All of us have greed, selfishness, anger, jealousy, grudge, ill will, enmity, self cruelty, wickedness, ignorance. All of us. So we have to reduce one by one, one by one, one by one, all these evil forces from the mind. Then we cultivate the kindness, sympathy, compassion, harmony, unity, patience, tolerance, wisdom, we cultivate. Now those things have no chance to cultivate because evil forces are dominating our mind. So religion is important to reduce those evil forces from the mind to cultivate all the good thoughts. And then the final salvation we can find. Yes, can you speak? Um, sir, sir, I have a question here. Um, what actually is good karma? Is good karma actually uh, helping old lady across the road? This party? Um, or where are you? Is it like cultivation of mind? Oh, you can see. Okay, um, sir. So, uh, what actually is good karma? Is good karma um, helping old lady across the street, um, donating to the poor, or is it the cultivation of mind? And what actually is bad karma? Let's say, for example, if I, in my mind, I feel like hitting someone, but I did not do it because of some um, legal obligations. Okay, so is that considered bad karma? Do I have to hit the person? <laughs> <laughs> Mind itself cannot create karma. Simply by thinking, I want to do that. But there are three things mind itself can create. But all the other activities, mind cannot create good karma or bad karma until we put into action with intention. Unintentionally, we may do lot of bad things. We cannot create bad karma. Take for instance, when you drive a motor car, you may kill cats and dogs and so many other creatures on the way. They die because of you. But you did not create any bad karma because that intention is not in your mind. There's an action alone cannot create karma. The mind must go with that. Then there are good things as good karma. Mention about eight of them as most important good karma. Dhanam, Silancha, Bhavana, Patti, Patthanamodana, Vriyavacha, Apajayana, Desana, Sutti, Dikti, you eat. Eight kind of good karma, they are very important for us to cultivate our religious way of life. Start with Dhanam. Dhanam means giving, offering, donating, sacrificing something for the well-being of others. If you don't do that, you maintain selfishness, stinginess, and by disregarding others, you enjoy your life. But you have not accumulated enough good karma for you to spend in the next existence. As Buddhists, we believe this is not the first and the last. After this, whether we believe or not, 
whether we can understand or not, naturally existence again takes place. Take for instance, birth is natural, sicknesses are natural, old age is natural, no need to believe. <laughs> Death is natural, no need to believe. <laughs> If anything happened after our death, that is also natural. <laughs> Not according to God or the Buddha or religion, it is natural. Therefore, by knowing this, we have to prepare, continue without suffering, without facing troubles and problems and difficulties. To avoid all these things, we have to do more and more good karma then we can continue our life without facing a lot of problems. Now, in this world, how many millions human beings starving, dying, without piece of clothes to wear, I have seen, without shelter, under tree or the pavement or roadside, birth and death both. Winter and uh, rainy season, whole day and night they had to live. Animals can live without shelter because they are skins and um, they protect the body, but we cannot. And no medicines whenever they suffer from sickness. From birth up to the death, life is nothing but suffering. Who created them to suffer like this? People believe God created all these living beings. If God created them, it is not His duty to provide them food and clothing and lodging and medicines and this and this. How can God keep quiet without creating them? A father, after producing few children, keep quiet without providing their food and necessary things, keep quiet. And therefore we don't believe. This is the reason. Although they had the chance to become humans, they have not accumulated enough good karma to carry on, to maintain their life without somebody. Uh, that is why the good karmas are natural, very important. Punyani paralo kasmin patitthavanti panina. Buddha said twice. After our death, there is nobody in this world who can support us. Only our own karma. If we have done some good karma, this good karma provides support all our requisites for us to lead our life without suffering. Throughout life after life, we have to carry it. The Buddha's advice is, how long can you carry on like this? Is it not suffering? Where is the end of it? Ah, therefore you must try to find out the end of it. Then you will be free from all this suffering. That is called salvation. Uh, good evening. I'm so sorry. I have you. I have to crawl there to come here to ask a question. Because I definitely must not miss this opportunity, otherwise I don't know when I can ask this question. <laughs> uh, I'm a Buddhist, uh, I believe in karma, but the thing is, uh, there's one question which I'm wondering very much. There's a distant relative who is only 40 years old, and he is suffering from cancer. Right now he's still in the hospital, and uh, his suffering is so terrible. I just want to know, is it that he has a lot of bad karma uh, last life and that's why this life he has to suffer till maybe till his death? Because at the moment 
I still go and visit him very often. And each time when I see the way he suffer, is there an ending to, to this karma, to this bad karma? Maybe last time he done a lot of bad things, so his karma has to put him in such a way to suffer to the bad. I, I think, you know, it looks like he's going to die soon. So I pray, I pray to, to, to God. God means, you know, Buddha. To ease his suffering in a way that, uh, you know, if, if uh, ask uh, Buddha or Goddess of Mercy to have some mercy uh, for him, if want to let him die, let him die fast, don't let him suffer. Like that. Because physically he's suffering a lot and but, uh, financially he's suffering a lot also because right now the bill is going higher and higher every day, coming to about 20 to 30k, 26k, the latest figure I got. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Do you know, eight months ago, I had prostate gland cancer. Doctor confirmed. They had taken all the x-ray and uh, bone scanning and all those things have to be very aggressive cancer in the prostate. He told me directly. When he told me, I laughed. <laughs> then this doctor is very funny. I have never met another patient when I mentioned that you are having a cancer. <laughs> you don't know what to do now. But in your case, you laugh. I really can understand. Then to console me, he told me, do you know, these are the problems that we had to face. Then I told him, Doctor, these are not problems. <laughs> when we take things seriously into our mind, we create the problem. <laughs> Otherwise, there are no problems in this world. Right. <laughs> Remember. Then what happened? He told me he wanted to treat me. Great treatment. Then I told him, please, don't give me chemotherapy. Because my hair may drop. You know? <laughs> then he gave another kind of treatment for six months. Every day. Then he told me side effect. Everybody experience some sort of side effect. Either vomiting, burning, burning, and the burning the skin. You had to face it. I said, all right. They have treated me six months. No side effect. <laughs> Because I really cannot understand why you never had any side effect. I told him, I never get side effect, I get full effect. <laughs>
I knew nothing will happen to me. I did not worry anything about this. Every day I went out, preaching, teaching, attending. Everybody scolded me, you can't you understand, you are sick. <laughs> Never mind, if I can do, why do you worry? I did not neglect all my duties with confidence, mental energy, confidence. The most important energy in this world. That one uh, developed the immune system. In the minds we develop this energy, immune system support and support and support and cure the sick. That is what the Buddha says, develop your faith and devotion and confidence, then you can reduce and reduce and reduce your sickness. Praying and worshiping to God gives some consolation to console our mind. Oh, I pray to God, I pray to Buddha, I pray to Bodhisattva, I think they support me. Then reduce fear and worry. Only for that purpose it is important. But to me that is praying and worshipping not important. Now I will see. Again, second part of the question. All our troubles and problems and sicknesses are not due to our bad karma, Buddha says. Only some of them are due to our bad, due to our ignorance, our misbehavior and changing our daily routine in our life, our food, our way of life. All these things contribute to create a lot of sicknesses, troubles and problems. Karma has nothing to do with it. See how practical Buddha has mentioned this. Um, the gentleman over there. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, and everyone, all the more. I'm not a Buddhist, but uh, I like to ask you. Uh, as you say, it's a uh, mind. You are a Buddhist, so you are not a Buddhist. No, no, I'm not a Buddhist. But uh, <laughs> as, you, as I listen to your talk, it's, it's everything about the mind, right? Uh, I just want to ask for your advice. How to overcome our weakness? I believe everyone here has a reason to, to be here to listen to your talk. And uh, it's not easy sometimes for any any weak person like me or anybody here to overcome. What's your advice? I have written a book called Why Worry. Do you know how many people have stopped committing suicide? after reading this book. I have met them, not only in Malaysia, other countries also, America, Australia, Germany, and few couples who were separated due to misunderstanding. After reading this book, they have returned to me because of their book, now we are living again as husband and wife. This book I have enlarged, now in the press. Lot of new worries there now in that book. <laughs> <laughs> will be out on my birthday next month. Not next month, this month, end of this month. My birthday. Uh, that book really helped those who have worries come to our temple. I give on this book. After reading and reading and reading, he comes with a smiling face, borrow or buy 10 to 15 books to give to his friends, give to his friends. Because there we point out where the mistake is. We create imagination about our problems and trouble and we are the culprit. We have created the trouble. But we blame others, we complain others. We are not ready to admit that I am also responsible for these troubles and this problem. Uh, when you read this kind of book, you can understand. Uh, then you can, your understanding can reduce fear, worry, suspicions, anger, all sorts of things. Uh, this book will be out end of this month, enlarged edition. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs>
Any more questions? Yes, please. Hello. Good evening, Madam Rosa. Uh, I have two questions, but I'll get one at a time. Okay, the first question. Okay, the first question is, why do Buddhism associate premature death with bad karma? If one can, uh, if one can live this world without having to suffer old age and its associated sickness, is it not a blessing in disguise? Also, when one has to, also when one dies young with less bad karma, wouldn't it be better for one's next rebirth? Actually, in that question, there is no meaning. <laughs> no meaning. You have mix up and muddle up everything. <laughs> Ask this question. These are natural occurrences. Whether they have religion, whether they have God, whether they have karma or not. Now, let us take animals. They have no religion, no karma, no God, nothing. But we, the way how they suffer, many kinds of sicknesses and troubles and problems and enormous things. So, these are natural occurrences. So, religion is important for us to understand and to train mind. When these natural occurrences disturb us, how to tolerate and how to make mind, not to worry, not to develop fear, otherwise no point. That is why the Buddha has advised us, don't develop your craving too much for this world. The more you live, the more you have to suffer. No one is free from sicknesses, old age, troubles, worries and disturbance, whether they are rich or poor, educated or not. But, uh, Doctor, Doctor Funeral?
they ask two questions from Confucius. Is it true whether there will be another life after our death? Confucius said, but still we have not learned what this life is. How do we know whether there will be another life? <laughs> Second question. Is there anything that we can do for our departed one? Confucius said, but still we have not learned to fulfill our duties towards a living one. So what can we do for the dead one? <laughs> but they could not satisfy with this answer. Uh, that is why they decided to go to India. <laughs> Having heard there is a religion called Buddhism. They stayed for many years, studied languages, Buddhism, collected all the important religious materials. Then they noticed very carefully three existing religions in India at that time. Brahminism, today known as Hinduism. Jainism, extremist, that religion also still exists in India. And Buddhism, these three religions. These Chinese, they watch very carefully how they practice these three religions. Then they notice to practice Hinduism or Jainism, they had to follow Indian tradition, Indian customs, Indian way of life. Otherwise they cannot practice those religions. But to practice Buddhism, it is not necessary for Chinese to become Indians. <laughs> they can remain as Chinese. They can respect their Chinese culture. They can practice Buddhism as a religion. Without any difficulties, they introduce Buddhism in China because of that. Therefore, these two are great thinkers, philosophers, psychologists and all the great qualities were there. But they are not enlightened religious teachers like the Buddha. We respect them, we quote their beautiful saying in our publications also. They are not religions. Um, we just have one <laughs> last question, sorry. Now <laughs> ten, you know, start at eight. Thank you very much. Uh, Venerable Dr. Tamananda for the beautiful talk that you've given us. First one is a comment. That is, you believe, uh, you said that Buddha left and 550 million followed him. But at the end of it, I believe the wife too be, became a bhikkhu, a follower of Buddha, as well as the son. My question, uh, that's a comment, and my question now is, good karma. Thinking of good things, is that enough? Or doing action? Or do you, do you have to do both? Which is more important? Because you cannot do everything that you think. Thank you. I cannot understand your question. Parampal <laughs> <laughs> sir. You mentioned good karma. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So it is at the end of it the control of the mind. Yeah. Therefore, thinking good, thinking good, is that good enough? Or oh, do yeah. good? Oh. Or do you have to do both? Thinking good is only one item. Thank you. Thinking good, one item. Talking gently, politely, second item. Do things perfectly, third item and then complete it.
and also your answers. I think uh, all of you are captivated by the answers and there seems to be more and more questions, but unfortunately due to constraints of time, we just cannot um, pose another, more, another one more question. But if you really feel that you want your questions to be answered, please come to SDM tomorrow. The Chief Reverend will be there at uh, 2 p.m. We'll be giving a talk. Uh, come early because uh, there's not enough, um, it's not a very big temple, so do, do come early. Okay, please be seated. Uh, I will now be um, uh, inviting the Bermuses up here to give you uh, blessings. And then after that, I will make some um, important announcements. Bermuses, this way, this way up. Actually, Many of you do not know what these months are going to do now. <laughs> they are not going to dance. <laughs> it is not a joke. When the monks develop their kindness, compassion, sympathy, for your well-being, for your good health, for your happiness. This mental energy, while reciting, they transmit, radiate. Again, in your case, you develop devotion, confidence, understanding, and pay attention by controlling your mind. When you pay attention, during that time, evil thought and had no chance to appear in your mind. Mind is completely pure. When you pay attention with mindfully. It is very difficult for us to maintain our mind for one minute without allowing any of our evil thoughts to appear in the mind. Therefore, when we radiate our mental energy with sound vibration, this sound vibration, what we recite, are the words that come out from the Buddha's mouth, not our own. That is why we do not use another language. The word, the language used by the Buddha, we repeat. It is mentioned. The Buddha was the only human beings in this world who lived without telling a lie in his whole lifetime. Today you have six billion human beings. Can you find out one human being, never tell you lie? <laughs> the Buddha did that. Therefore, the words that come out from that holy mouth, for the last 2,500 years, all over the world, people benefited, get chance to, what you call, with their sicknesses, troubles and worries. 1979, I went to London. Secretary General of the Paritech Society was very sick. He advised, requested few monks to go there and do some chanting because he knows the Pali language very well. They translate the Pali teaching of the Buddha into English. So when we went there, he was lying down. He cannot talk, he had no strength. Few words. But he requested us to recite seven Bhujanga Sutras. They know the names and the meaning of every word of these sutras. I like to listen seven Bhujanga Sutras. So we recited for nearly half an hour. Believe me, when we ended our chanting, we got up. Sit down. I never had this relief 
in my life for a long time. He was so happy. At that time they were collecting money to build London Buddhist Vihar. He asked to bring a checkbook and asked to write 10,000 pound donation to London Buddhist Vihar. The happiness that he gained, the immediate effect that he experienced after paying attention. So it's more psychological. We radiate sound vibrations, mental vibration. You attune your mind with devotion, confidence, understanding, with pure mind. Because in your mind, no, no chance to create any evil thought in your mind. It's a very important occasion. So now we are going to recite few sutras, chanting for your well-being, for your good health, for your happiness. Whatever religion you believe, we are all human beings. Therefore don't bother about religion. Three days ago, Archbishop Sotapanandas came to my room Please bless me. <laughs> I always say, may the Buddhist God bless you. <laughs> he was so happy and he blessed me. So, forget about religious labels. Think we are human beings. Uh, then we, have, we can reduce our discrimination, superiority complex, all this uh, discrimination. Pay attention. Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sam Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sam Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sam Iti viso bhagavaram samma sam buddho vijjatarana Sugato loka vidu anuttaro Padipanno Bhagavato Sāvaka Sāngo Uju Padipanno Bhagavato Sāvaka Sāngo Nyāya Padipanno Bhagavato Sāvaka Sāngo Kāpīsi Padipanno Bhagavato Sāvaka
on the 23rd of March, Sunday, at 7.30 p.m. at Paul Kaksi um, on Lessons. Um, and uh, all those who have helped in one way or another to make tonight's talk a very successful one. And also, I must not forget to thank all the sisters, uh, sisters of the Man Fat um, Welfare Friendly Society for um, really volunteering to help us tonight. And also, uh, you ladies and gentlemen, for your presence here too. So, um, good night. See you again. May you all be well and happy. Thank you.